Welcome, participant 999,999. You have been selected to participate in the chronological haunted anomalous interconnected narrative, otherwise known as Chain. Once you start, it will never end. It will never end. It will never end. It will never end. It, it will never end. In 1997, 20 unrelated games for the PS1 were uncovered in an old U.S. Navy bunker. Years later, in 2006, they re-emerged, and a team of digital archaeologists were assigned to investigate them. The games had no known origin or publisher. The mystery of their interconnected narrative was an anomaly to the government, and research was done to uncover their true chronological order. Operation Chain was established. Chain is yet another game that one of my friends recommended to me, my elusive game dealer. This one is interesting because it is not on Steam, it is not on the Microsoft Store, and even ChatGPT doesn't know quite what Chain is. It was made by the PlayStation 1 horror community, a group of people who like to bring to life the golden age of PlayStation 1 horror. Uh, I happen to enjoy this error. This game is a collection of 20 separate games that are built in a telephone type of way. Uh, nobody knows what came too far before or what's to come. They only know the game prior to the one that they are making. The first level you play as a woman named Miss Blanche with a torch. Uh, it's very simple. You walk through like a small little labyrinth. Uh, not really even a labyrinth. There's only one way to go uh, until you get to the other side and there's a door with a giant skeleton on it. It opens and the game ends. This is where it became very clear to me how the game was going to go. Originally, I thought it was going to be a ton of large individual games that kind of connected. Uh, but here, it's very clear that they're immediately following each other. Um, the game is kind of cut up into maybe three or four different main arcs. Uh, there's a few story shifts. For the first few, follow Miss Blaine. Uh, the next level, you come out on a massive, expansive beach, and there's no one there but you and one strange gentleman, which I nicknamed Jeffrey. Uh, no pun intended. Just kidding, there, there was a pun intended. He leads us into the ocean so that we can undergo a test, and about a little ways in, we start drowning. This was one of two moments which I really enjoyed in the game. We take on Jeffrey, we become him, and we figure out what he's doing. He's actually looking after a few participants who have found themselves in the same situation as Miss Blanche, all undergoing some kind of transformation. You find the puddled mess of what was participant number two, but now he's flying and happy. So you go over to participant one with your Glock, as you would, and you discover that he's been turned into a monster. Jeffrey kills him, and then expresses that he's done something against the will of his benefactor, and that he will soon cease to exist. But maybe Miss Blanche will be able to pass her test without him. So now you resume as Miss Blanche, who wakes up on the ocean floor, surrounding by a bunch of different people or versions of her. This part's odd, it's fun, you do a little Moses split of the water, which is pretty cool, but eventually you end up in the hand of a larger Mrs. Blanche, and then you get crushed. When you wake up, you're in a hospital or a school, and you seem to have shifted out of Miss Blanche. Now you are just the player, a character, a person, an individual, with no name. Now here, I'm not really quite sure what happens. This is when I started getting a little confused. Um, I think you leave your body, and you become a disembodied head, and you start floating around in a very trippy, very trippy uh, little world. Um, took me a second to get the hang of it, but by the end, it was really chill and enjoyable. You get all these keys, and eventually, to the midst of a narrator that's speaking over, you get your body and you begin the rebirth cycle. So after you get your body, you play a, the most difficult one, actually, by the way. Of all the games, this one is the hardest. You roll around a little ball trying to collect fallen human souls so that you can be born yourself. 
So you're building your own soul here. And following this, this is one of the arcs of the game. You start as Miss Blanche, and then you kind of come into this being born stage. There's three different levels all about being born. The first part of this cycle is a woman carrying an embryo inside of a cage. She drags it around, killing a bunch of weird flesh worms, and at the end, she cuts her own umbilical cord with a blade saw. The next bit, the, the, this was like a, one of those itch.io games where you um, try to eat like the bigger paper or something, or like the bigger slime to get bigger and bigger. It was near impossible to control the physics of this thing, this rock, this slug, but it kind of felt like a uh, reference to sperm because you are fighting against other slime rock things to be the biggest and earn the right to be born. This one was weird. You are born as this like horrible little creature in a test tube and then you break out and start murdering all the scientists. The level was weird. It was really easy to get stuck and fall through walls. Uh, eventually I found a lemur. I'm not sure what that was about but the sky, the buildings started falling apart. And when I found the lemur, the game just ended. I am not sure what it was about, but I, I think it's pretty clear we, we have been born. So the story and narrative shifts rather abruptly. These next few levels are very similar and kind of lead into each other very well. This one, you're in the woods and you start setting up crosses around wells before going into a cave and promptly drowning. Immediately following is a game that looks like it was taken on someone's Android phone, where a man's going through the exact same cave that the other man drowned in, and is burning these horrible ear-piercing eyeballs. I had to turn the volume down. These, this right here is the most horrible sound I've ever had to endure in gaming. You get through to the other side, and the guy that's filming talks about sacrificing other humans who have been crucified. Um, three other humans, he burns them alive on crosses to prevent whatever these eyes are, these kind of eldritch horrors. If he can convince them to look away, they won't try to manifest themselves. This one was interesting. Uh, it was just a little dodge game, but the eyes that were in the previous level keep telling us how they don't care uh, they want our world and they say our tragedy and they've decided that nothing we do will deter them this time this was actually a really the chill levels were my favorite um, some of them were very monotonous especially later on when you start trying to find a bunch of books but this one in particular was very chill i was even able to like drink a soda while i did it so the next few are very similar. Uh, specimen 14, Specimen 15, and Specimen 16 are all about collecting forbidden knowledge. We figure out in this one that we have actually let this eldritch being free rather than binding it away. You're stuck in a maze trying to collect a bunch of different books, Slenderman style and kind of Pac-Man style. But when you get them all, you realize that even with the knowledge, you can't stop them. It's uh, too much knowledge, cursed knowledge, kind of the, the good old-fashioned eldritch, can't read anything sort of deal. You lose your mind and perish. You wake up again in a very similar situation, much more Slenderman style, where you're running from eyeballs in the forest trying to collect more knowledge. Once you get the last book, this game ends abruptly. The next one picks right off. You find a cabin in the middle of the woods, and you have to collect a bunch of different ingredients so that you can do a ritual based off the books you got. When you do the ritual, it's revealed that that was the final step in the summoning of whatever it was you were trying to stop. Uh, it tricked you, a double fake. At first, it's like, oh, you've already summoned us, but then you actually summon them by trying to unsummon them. Classic Eldritch. This one here is a uh, veil. Uh, it's in a forest again, and it's following the same character from Specimen 14, 15, and 16. You're again trying to find books, but it is all in vain. An eyeball that is already too powerful for you has come in, and it transports you to another dimension where you're lost forever. Uh, doomed, one might say. This one was really weird. It's a 2D uh, library where the librarian's been taken over by a monster and you have to find a bunch of little scripts to get rid of that monster. Th 
this one's a bit of an outlier. I'm not sure entirely how it connects to the entire story, but I will say it was fun and honestly just a great breather because I was getting kind of bogged down by this point. I was like, well, if I see one more eyeball, which I did, but it was in 2D style, so it was a good little, little breather for me. This one is short, and it takes us right back, and it's actually the only one that proper spooked me. You're in a library with a bunch of shades, and your father has told you that at the very end, you have to go find this book as a last hope to stop the horror. You have to go through and find which uh, library shelf has the book you got. I got really unlucky the first time just because I didn't know what was going on, and I did in fact perish. But the second time, I found it very quickly. Once you get the book, you realize that your father's message is to simply give in to the void, and that there is nothing left to do to stop what has come. At the very end, you are walking down a street towards the void, or this horror that has been unleashed, that you were so desperately trying to stop, but you couldn't. And in the end, it got what it wanted. And here is the game's climax. You, with all that's left of your strength, push forward towards a man sitting in a chair watching a TV that seems to be showing the world in chaos. Once you get to the end, he talks to you like he knows you. And he says that your individual struggle has been selfless and has stopped his coming into the world. He congratulates you and he even calls you friend. And it's at this point that I kind of jumped logic here. I think he's the Antichrist. Don't laugh at me. Um, <laughs> But I think you are the one thing that keeps stopping it from coming. And the entire game is this death, rebirth, and then growing up to stop this horror. Although inevitably being unable to stop it. Uh, so it's a sign that no matter how many times you do it, the end will come. But for the time that you do endure, you placate it. Uh, chain is a game of cycles, and it's a fun project, uh, a chain of developers building different games without really knowing what's going on, and it's it's a bit of a sleeper hit for me. Very interesting, very enjoyment. Um, I'll link it in the description. There is a sequel to this, which is much more popular. I think this one kind of, it didn't blow up, but it blew up in their community. And because of that, uh, they made a second one, which is, I think, a bit more fleshed out, a lot more time added to it. So maybe one day I'll check it out. But for now, I think I'm stuck to start again. How many more times will you have to go through this cycle? Or maybe you should just give up and let it all end. Because once you start, it will never end. It will never end. It will never end.